Hi, I'm Caroline and I am an early years professional um, specialising in speech and language skills as well. So um, I've just come on today um, to do a kind of follow on from my starting school where I was talking about um, gross and fine motor skills. So I kind of got thinking about um, all the activities that I just do um, with the children that I work with um, on a kind of daily basis. Um, and I kind of do it without thinking now, but when I sat and wrote a list about all the things that you can do to help hand-eye coordination and fine motor skills, I've actually got quite a lot of ideas up my sleeve. So I thought it might be worth sharing with you. Um, so I'm speaking about from around about the age of 15 months um, all the way up to starting school. So four, coming up five. Um, and I've got a range of activities that can kind of progress with your child. Um, so in front of me, as you can see, I've got a range of bricks. Um, these sort of bricks are going to be great for a child that is around about 15 months onwards to be able to build and balance. And then moving from there onto some smaller bricks. Um, progressing at about 18 months to two years of age, we can move to, um, mega blocks are actually a better, a better one, mega blocks, which are quite nice and easy to slip on and off um, and for your child to build with. Um, so really using their um, fine motor skills and hopefully using a lot of pincer grip to pull these apart. And whereas these kind of bricks, they might be doing it more in a whole palmer grip um, or maybe a tripod grip with three fingers so um, and then duplo would be the one i'd recommend after that so kind of two and a half um they're a little bit harder to pull apart but um, they're really great for strengthening the hands because they do have to use a little bit of force and then from there and moving on to our classic Lego. So um, yeah, just if you're wondering about some nice toys that you can buy for your child to help with their fine motor skills, these toys, they will still play with the coloured bricks and the wooden bricks making more adventurous things when they're three and four. So they're a really good investment in my eyes. Um, and moving on from there, I have got some um, more things that they can use to really help their fine motor. So um, I've got some Play-Doh here. I've got um, the classic tapper shape and I have also got a pegboard. So um, these are kind of going to be from around about the age of three again that you can start to introduce these kind of coins. So they're a little bit smaller pieces. Um, obviously any younger than three, they're likely to put them in their mouths, up their noses, in their ears. <laughs> That still might happen at three, but um, at least you can explain to them. So um, the tapper shape is great because it's got really small little pins um, and it's got a hammer as well. So they're having to kind of use a wrist action, which is also really important for writing skills. Um, they're definitely going to be using the pincer grip picking up pegs on a pegboard. You can get various variations of these. Um, this is a really nice one that has pictures and it's got other pictures within the box so they can follow a pattern and um, which can lead to other areas of development as well. And then I just wanted to show you um, a really simple fine motor skill that you can do with Play-Doh. Obviously children love playing with Play-Doh. They might like to use the cutters and things which are great for hands, but you can just use Play-Doh and your hands. So um, you can demonstrate with your child. They just need a piece that's small enough to go in the palm of their hand um, and they can squeeze, swapping it over. They can roll into a sausage shape. They can pinch. So using a pincer grip all the way down, flip it over. They can roll it into a ball. Now to start with, they might need a surface to help them. But as you can see, this is really good for strengthening the hand and the wrist again. Um, and then you can put it in your hand and pat it flat on both sides. And then you can use your fingers to make little patterns in it. Um, and as I say, if you look up something called Do Disco, um, you'll get lots of other tips on these kind of things that you can do. You can have some music on in the background and make it really fun. So moving on from there, I'm going to talk about all things threading. So um, threading beads. 
I've got some really nice chunky ones. These are by Melissa and Doug um, and the holes are quite big and the laces are quite big. So um, nice and easy hand-eye coordination, get them through lots of pulling and using our pincer grip. So definitely get yourself a set of these. Um, you can also use a threading card. So um, I've got a little one here um, of a tree. So you can draw things on card yourself and use a hole punch to make holes and you can use your string from home and what I would recommend is like the shoelace has obviously got the hard bit you could put a bit of sellotape around the end of it to help them to navigate their way a little bit easier into the threading so um, from there I have got um, another really great one for hand-eye coordination and that are these lovely little fishing games so uh, this is a really nice activity to do. And you can do it with a friend or with yourself so they're having to share and take turns as well. You can maybe just have one fishing rod to do that. So they're holding the fishing rod, they're having to direct it and to catching a fish. So really good for hand-eye coordination. I've got a lovely magnetic, another Melissa and Doug toy. I'm a bit of a fan of Melissa and Doug, um, where this has got some really nice beads and again, a picture pattern, a bit like my pegboard. And then at the end, it's got a little magnetic type pencil. It's just popped off, but they use it to um, direct the beads, which you can see at the bottom. This only works when it's flat up onto the dog. So that's really, really nice. And then my ultimate best buy. Um, we had these in the last school that I worked at. And um, as I'm a tutor, and I have a lot of reluctant writers, um, I invested in some. They weren't cheap, but it was a really good investment and I have got so much use out of them. So these are called um, a, a blackboard. And um, I ordered two different size pencils to come with my set. So we've got a pencil that's a little bit more triangular to encourage the tripod grip. And you sew, you put the thread through it and then what the child is doing is pushing it in and out of the holes to make a pattern. So I bought various coloured laces um, and by the time they fill this whole board up, it's beautiful, it's rainbow-like, they can do any sort of pattern that they like with it. And then I've got um, a normal kind of shaped pencil here as well for when their hands are ready for just the pincer grip. And um, again, it's quite a nice progressive toy it's fun so um hopefully they won't be too reluctant to do it um from there if your child does like drawing and um coloring and painting fantastic do that as much as you can um i'm just trying to give you some other types of activities that you might not realize are equally as um effective at helping fine motor skills so i've got these really nice trace boards and um, again this is something that you could probably print off the internet and just use a pencil and um, i've got a dry white and um, wipe board and a um board pen that so they can do zigzags diagonals circles bumps and loop the loop so um, again just is, is progressing onto actually um, writing. And they quite like having a whiteboard and being able to, to wipe it off. Again, it's quite novel. So all these sorts of activities are absolutely fantastic for helping your child get ready to write. And if you've got time over the summer, I would highly recommend that you do them. Another really fun one is just with some sellotape, um, stick it along the table, get your child to rip it off. That's really good for strength, really easy one, where perhaps while they're sitting waiting for their dinner. Um, you can do pipe cleaners in and out of a colander. Um, you can make patterns in dry sand or even wet sand, actually. So they're using their fingers and their hands and their wrists to, um, to get the motions necessary for when they start writing. So they are my top tips and the toys that I would recommend that if you've got at home to, um, to use them and be mindful that you are actually helping your child to get their fine motor skills ready for writing. Thanks for listening.